Our last guest is Dee Lewis, who is here to share her story as she recently went through the death and dying experience with her mother at Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center. Well, welcome to the show today, Dee. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you. Well, on today's show, we've already discussed um, organ donation, um, as well as end-of-life decisions and the National Healthcare Decisions Day. Mm -hmm. And so today, I thought it would be important for you to be our guest and to share your story about how you recently um, accompanied your mother through that death and dying experience mm -hmm. at Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center. Okay. So, um, are you ready to get started? I am. Well, good, good. Well, let's kind of start at the beginning. Um, okay. When did your mother come to uh, Novant Health Brunswick Medical Center? This was, was on Monday, January 20th. Mm -hmm. um, she had a sudden illness and was brought to the hospital via ambulance I and see. through her family physician. And, and then she was directly admitted into the into the emergency room of course we had to as a family we had to go to the emergency room first right and very pleasant experience there uh, the people at the desk were very helpful um, they assured us that they were getting our mother to a room and you know they would let us know as soon as that happened um, we probably waited about 20 minutes or so and then had to go up to the desk of course and fill out paperwork, paperwork. and things mm -hmm. and once all of that was completed the um, the little lady at the desk offered to take us through the hospital you know wanted to make sure we knew where we were going well it can, can be kind of hard it's a big place that's so right never and, been, been there before right and of course we had never come in from that direction anyway mm -hmm. so yeah she was very helpful so she took us on up to the floor where my mother was and they already had her in there and she was resting comfortably they were able to get her stabilized her condition at that point um, the hospitalist that was on staff that day uh, was dr adams mm -hmm. and he was just terrific came yeah, in yeah, did a whole history with her and with us, and um, so that that was all good. And then he explained to us that he wanted to get um, do a referral to a GI specialist because mm -hmm. we he felt like that that was very important right. to do that. Um, so then you know there was a period of, of waiting and um, you know in order for the specialist to come in. And so we just stayed there with our mother. The nursing staff was phenomenal. I said to my brother at the time, I said, you know, I've never been treated like this at a <laughs> hospital before. You know, that they just bent over backwards. They wanted to know what our names were. And, um, you know, that was just really super. Plus the rooms are, really are not like regular hospital rooms. No, they're not. They're, they're, very, got, nice. they're very comfortable. And, um, you know, they explained to us where the refreshments were, you know, if we needed. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, if we needed anything like that. And so that was on Monday. And then the, on Tuesday, then the specialist came in, which was Dr. Holt. Mm -hmm. um, Frank very, Holt? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice man. Um, he knew my mother's family physician very well, as did Dr. Adams. Of course. So we had a consultation with them. Oh, well, that was nice. It was very nice. Uh, so then Dr. Holt decided at that point that we would go ahead and schedule an upper GI to mm -hmm. see what was going on. Obviously, sure. she was having a GI bleed. And so that was all discussed. My mother understood, you know, what was yeah. going on and, you know, and all that. So then, then after, after they left, um, we had a visit from the chaplain. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, we have a very um, a great uh, group of chaplains there that volunteer their time. Right. That's what, that's what he said. And it was really interesting because he had had a similar experience several years back when the hospital was at the old location. Mm -hmm. So then he, he shared all of that with us. And, you know, we had a nice little prayer and all with uh -huh. with my mother and uh, so that that was nice but she I think she really I bet she, just made her feel much more comfortable right. and everything so um, then Wednesday morning um, she was scheduled for her procedure mm -hmm. I arrived at the hospital extremely early yeah. you know so I could spend some time with her right. before they took her down we just thought this was going to be a routine test mm -hmm. 
nurses came up and got her. The ladies that work with Dr. Holt, they were just so the, nice. The employees at the hospital who, who uh, provide uh, right. support for him? Yes. Right, and, and from, the, from the operating room. And so they, they came in, and they were just so sweet to my mother. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's 88 years old. And so, you know, they understood about her instability, you know, about oh, standing yeah, up. Sure. I mean, they were just right there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they let me just come right with them went down the back elevators and mm -hmm. and then we we got into the to the operating area and then I w we went into a little room and then the the doctor and the anesthesiologist came in and his name escapes me the anesthesiologist he was so nice I mean just explaining every little thing mm -hmm. that was going to happen That's wonderful it was, it was really great. So again, we just thought this was going to be a routine procedure. Uh -huh. Off they go with her. And then in the meantime, um, one of the volunteers came by, asked me if I, if I needed anything, <laughs> if I needed coffee. They're, and they're great. They are. And she said, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on things. I'll let you know what's going on. Right. And, and she came by a couple more times after that. Mm -hmm. Even and so then, did you get a blanket? Usually they're passing out she blankets. She asked me. She asked me because it was extra. That it's was cold that was in that there. really cold snap that we had and yeah. all the ice and everything. Um, asked me if I needed a blanket. And I told her no. You know I was fine. And uh -huh. so I, you know, she told me how to operate the TV. You know and all that. So we <laughs> sat there and you know I watched the TV. And so then the anesthesiologist came out and explained to me that things weren't going as well as what they thought, oh. that the bleeding had increased, and, um, you know, they were just very concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, of course, I'm, I was there by myself. Oh. Um, he said, you know, if you have any other family members, you, you, know, you might want to write. Yeah. So, and I knew we had, it was very strange because the week before, my brother had had this whole conversation with my mother about her end-of-life wishes, and she wasn't sick. <laughs> no. So... You know, and she she told him exactly what she wanted done. She did have a living will in place, which, you know, was That's very wonderful. important. But I think it's just so important to have that verbal conversation because right. then there's no confusion right. about about who wants what. So um, anyway, then I called my brother. He then came he in. came right away. Uh, then and we explained to the to the doctor and to the anesthesiologist that we that my mother wanted a natural death. Right. And we did not want any extra mm -hmm. things to prolong. We just wanted her to be kept comfortable, right. no pain. So they totally agreed. They, in fact, I think they were relieved. They were relieved that you that you, yes, you that, knew that and yes. you were able to communicate that to so them. So they said, well, that that was, that was exactly what they had in mind. And, of course, they wanted to do what we wanted. Of course. You know, if there was anything else, then that was fine. So, and we were just all kind of, you know, in shock at that point. Of course. You know, trying to get. It's a difficult, difficult right. time. It was very difficult. So we stayed there um, and, and waited until they brought her out. And usually they take them to the recovery room mm -hmm. from a procedure like that, and then the family can't go back there. Correct. Well, one of the little one of the nurses came out, and she she was so worried, and she knew you know she what, knew was, what was going on. She yeah. said, "I want you to come back here and be with your mother, you know, for as long as you can." And I, we were just. I mean, we were just kind of flabbergasted, you know, by by the reaction from the whole staff. The the um, volunteer came back by, you know, just to make sure that we were kind of headed in the right direction. So off we went. Uh, we asked to speak to Dr. Adams again. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were going to arrange all of that. So they took us back to be with our mother, and she she was aware, aware. you mm -hmm. know, of, of yeah. us being there. And they had given her some medication for pain. And, and we were waiting for an ICU room. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh -huh. they were going to go ahead and take her mm -hmm. up there so we would be more comfortable with her and, you know, and, and you know, if anybody else needed to come to, right. you know, to be with her. So we were probably, we were probably in the recovery area for, oh, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes. They got a room ready, took us on up there. Um, had us in a, in a waiting room just for a little bit until they got a, yeah, you know, got, got her settled. situated mm -hmm. right. Sure. Um, so we were able to call her minister from the church oh, that she'd been a member of for that's years. Great. Yeah. 
right, so he was able to get there. Um, then they took us on back into the room with mm -hmm. her. She still was very aware of us being there. Really? And, the, the, uh, and then Dr. Adams came in then mm -hmm. and we talked with him again. And, and he was totally... And he's the hospitalist yes, there. Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. And he was totally on board with, you know, with what was going on, right. that we just wanted to keep her comfortable and, oh. and just let... That's, a, that's just a wonderful story. And then she uh, expired in ICU? She did. Uh, the minister came. Um, we were able to, you know, to talk with her. She knew that he was there. And probably, probably within about 30 minutes after he arrived, then she... She just and it was the most peaceful thing, you know, that I've ever seen. She just, yeah. she just went. She just went, yeah. but with all the love and support of her family, right. as well as the staff at the hospital, right? Um, it, they all played a part in that. They and, did, and, they and really I'm so did. happy to have you here to have folks hear about your story. Um, you're so brave to come and talk about that, and you have our deepest sympathy um, Thank you. on the loss of your mother. Thank um, you. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sharing that story, because I think it's important for folks out there, especially during this month, it's um, uh, organ procurement um, right. month. I just think it's, it's a real important story. So... Dee, thank you so much as a friend and as, uh, thank you. You're very welcome. as a professional who works with you um, on several occasions. I just want you to know how, um, how much I appreciate you being here. You do a great job. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity, you know, to share my story with other people. Well, it, it was a pleasure having you here today. And again, our deepest sympathies thank you. Um, for thank your you. loss. Thank you. Thank you.